he owns the video, he can cut, he can edit it when he wants. Where I should take you is where we did it, Corey, at least you got some points on that. And I'll tell you why, the view I'm about to give you is important because I sent you a couple of pictures right. on the camera. Right. Okay, so this is the camera view at 713. Okay. Okay, and at 713 p.m., we saw the first firemen enter the room. Okay. The room that was here led to this fireplace. Okay. This was the origin. From the same camera view, you see the entire house intact 50 minutes later. Now, what was on the inside? I'm looking at it now for the first time this close, and you can see what's a, a, a good bit of ash from our fire. We built a, a fire that two nights ago was fireplace was tested it was warmed up um, by Meredith with a couple logs and we were doing it with confidence because we had just installed new spark arresters and new chimney caps so her fire was without consequence a simple air it hasn't been working on what had been this portion of the house because she wanted to sit in this room and because it was chilly, I built the fire. And it being a large fireplace and the logs, the quarter pieces of oak cut for it, um, were about yay long. I got going and began working on building a bed of coals. And this was time what? This would have been, if, if they came in at 7.13, we would have started, let's call it six. Probably just as it got dark. That, I'm not sure how I would retrace. We would know we would know when we call 911. And I would say 40 minutes, 30 minutes before we call 911. Our first indication of compromise was Mary saw two sparks fall down. Now I'm looking at the fireplace now, Corey, and I can't see, and I'm guessing what melted was the flue bell. But what you used to look at was a deep, rich wooden mantle and wooden paneling for the first floor. What we saw was a spark or two fall. I'm going to guess, not knowing where the bell, and by the bell I mean that metal that, that, that shaped the flue. Um, we know that where that was, there I could see above it, uh, embers and what it looked like was that we had I think I'm seeing some metal above the chimney it looked like we had enough heat enough thermal mass built up that the wood touching that bell had begun to get hot and because there was this crack that is that, that I'm, until I can walk over there I can't know where it was but I just know that when I did this and looked up I knew I had a line from, from edge to edge where the where the flue bell ended and then there was a gap where I could look up and I could see red, I could see embers. Step one, Mary brought fire extinguisher, focus wasn't, uh, uh, a spray wasn't focused enough. Step two, Darren was out this door, right to the bathtub, hose that was hooked up there. 24 seconds to unthread and undo it. Hooked it up to the spigot that Velasquez had installed on the back side of the sunroom. That's on that staircase, Corey. Just behind that fireplace, you went up those steps to be in the sunroom. And we had a spigot just on the other side, which gave me enough draw to come in that doorway. No, that's the doorway to the, the sunroom doorway was further back. That's the doorway into a hall that brought you into here. So I had a spigot close enough, and that hose there and it was long enough that I got in front of the fire and squirted it up. Because the name of the game was to get that stream fine enough, get into that crack. And I thought, okay, if I can just whatever, let me attack it from where I can see it. This seemed okay until Mary said, Scott, it 
gaps in the panel. And so now it declines. And so because we had wood paneling pouring like this, uh, we could see flame. So now Darren, I began to spray the hose uh, where the flame was, top down. So I got it smoldered out by all observation, smoldered out. Mary was now, uh, she, she had to have already called 911. Once we went into spraying from this, it was okay, this is, this is not a do-it-yourself. Um, and then she was in cat capture and cat gathering mode. So I proceeded with that. At some point, Corey, I went upstairs and I went to the floor above it. And there were two beds that were pretty much on either side of that. So I shoved the beds out of the, out of the way. One at a time, using my hips. Got down and snagged the, um, you know, that, that piece of wood trim you put around so you can make the crack disappear. So I snapped that back. I was like, fuck, it's orange. It's orange. If I could replay it, I'd have run downstairs. I would have grabbed one of the bowls of water. I would have, what, just tell us what happened. Don't know what it Roger, so it was orange. So now we're orange, and so now I'm thinking, how far orange? So I go from second floor, we had just the middle of the house, it was this grand open staircase, so I go to the attic steps, and I'm entering the attic, eh, somewhere in this area. I go up in the attic, and I run back, and uh, look to see if there's any flame in the attic. No flame in the attic, no smoke in the attic. I come back down to resume spraying water in the wall. Mary, the, Mary must have gone out to look, and she says it's smoking from the, the chimney. It's smoking. It's smoking up there. So, <clears throat> at some point, and this is where things get blurry for both of us. Somewhere, she was actively getting the cats. I was actively assessing where the fire was. First, turning off all the air con units thinking okay let me get everything off before i go outside and cut the power um watching to see where the fire was but i wouldn't have walked away from it and it had to have been when the first six firefighters got here so once i would have been doing non holding the hose and it, that would have been me turning off break uh things encountering Mary in front of Laura's room, trying to get Callie into the same cat carrier as Mina, and Mina's jumping out and Callie's jumping in. So I drop down and we fight and wrestle to get them in. And meanwhile, Darren, she's got one cat, her Callie, downstairs, but she can't find Sabrina. And so she's like, I've got to find Sabrina. So one of us took him downstairs, probably her then, because I'm in and out of getting the house ready to fight a fire. And at some point I go back up into the attic and I see that it's now on fire in the attic, which would have been above here. And I know that they were here because I yelled to someone, it's in the attic now, it's in the attic now. Um, and where did the first fireman come in with a hose? Oh, nobody ever walked into the house with a hose or an extinguisher or phone. They walk in and look, but no one ever, I don't know, I, I don't know what happened to my hose that was left running. I don't even know if I turned it off. So um, would it be safe to say that immediately as they come up, they had probably already made up their mind to set up a perimeter in this container without going inside to fight? Oh. Did they ask were there any people in it? No. Nobody asked any, but um, somebody maybe asked, well, somebody had to, I feel like that was later, the whole EMS. They walked in, the first, they were in masks, and, and I was surprised that they were so covered, and they didn't have water. They just walked in and looked, and then they began to go outside, and they asked uh, about bringing a, bringing a truck around. And I said, yeah, just, just hug the shrubs because there's a septic tank. No, uh, um, at 7.13, in the picture, 
they came in kind of with the suits like from from emergency you know the ox they, with the mask and the oxygen like they were ready to be in a in a hardcore fire so that had me that had me telling them hey it's up here and it's up here um, I heard something blow in the attic and it was probably the air handler for this system and uh, I'm like, if the, if the air handler's blown, and in my mind, I'm like, we're, we're one second away from getting right up on it, and something, the retarder extinguish it for it. Um, so when they came in, they had the smoke, the smoke um, mask, they had the air tank, but did they, were they carrying in any fire no. extinguishers? No. No hose, no, no. Did they have like a hatchet? No. Axe? No, in fact, when we set us behind the wall, both Meredith and I went looking for crowbars to help them because they, 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 and this, I think I mentioned this in my 911 call, uh, uh, that it's behind these panels and I don't want to pull back from the panels and give them more air. So no, they didn't have any tools and both Meredith and I looked for crowbars to help them. Darren, I went to the hall tool closet and I don't know where, where she went to look, but uh, no, of course, sorry, a short answer is no, no tools, no nothing. Just, just equipment that the, and they just looked while they just looked but there was only six I know that from talking to them so I know that the, and they've never been here before and it was dark and my headlamp my Phoenix headlamp was the brightest light on site everybody else is in the dark they didn't have any headlamps so once the evolution goes to okay we, we have firemen on site we do we confirm there's a fire and then they do grab a hose okay when they grab the hose do they ever go inside the house or start shooting inside the house? Nope. Did they ever try to say, okay, we know it's in the front section, let's petition off and start shooting and save the back section? Nope. They didn't acknowledge any of that, but they didn't attack it like that. For the first 50 minutes from this camera view, and I got it recorded, you got a couple guys that walk up, walk, go in and out, and then it's just darkness until... Yeah. until yeah. Of course, for posterity reasons, we, we, we all know that they did not, even whenever they did deem it as a burn to the ground containment, they did not put water on the propane tank to keep them from cooking off like they should have done. No, and um, no, to their defense, they didn't know, um, but because the, 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 the deputies on duty weren't cooperating with them in the interest of safety so I didn't have the chance to say hey if it's here you should it's a, there's a tank well the first fireman on scene should identify as soon as they come here they should do a perimeter and identify all the gas tanks if they're properly trained they did they didn't have the lighting that's what was bizarre to me and, and, and you can see I mean they had next to no light and the light they used to fight the fire was a Honda generator and a little $18 two bulb LED thing. Again, the light the light that was used by the inmates who came through and worked on extinguishing it was my headlamp for the from 12 until 3. I shown I would shine the headlamp so that they could go through the debris pile uh, and, and spray water. And, and and frankly if I wanted something sprayed I pointed the headlamp at it and they'd start spraying it. And when the trees would keep burning I'd point the headlamp and they'd spray there. I kind of was leaving it. And they didn't have any light, Corey, to even know what they were stepping on. So they don't have helmet lights on their helmets? Nobody had helmet lights. And because they were quote unquote just inmates, they they, they really, I mean, they, they let that crew of five or six guys, I don't know how they walked. What do you mean inmates? The firemen were inmates? The people who put out the fire, once the people got done watching it, or at least extinguished it as much as could, were, were borrowed from the, the, the correctional, the, the, the state has a correctional unit. Uh, correctional fire team out of uh, Reesville. That must have been what and who. And there were uh, d d two guys. Uh, that, that's seven that's people. Reesville so. State Prison, so that would be state inmates. What, what, I'm at, what I want to know is we're paying taxes for Liberty County, okay, mm -hmm. and we got a fire station here. And the, I want to know for, for uh, um, the record, yeah. is. Liberty County, or, uh, who we pay taxes for, what did those firemen do? They brought seven in them, uh, of them in a van. Yeah, the um, so the, there were seven seven people from Reedsville, and what they did was oversaw. So while they were putting it out, there were two Liberty County firefighters because I've been and I've probably videoed this. Uh, were walking behind them, just I guess to supervise or to see. I couldn't quite tell you. And then when the night got to be too late for everyone, right. 
they left on site a pump truck uh, and two young firefighters <clears throat> and their task was to keep the trees from burning and and in a third person they had a they had a, a supervisor and then two young firefighters so a truck and a pump truck and they used the pump truck to spray intermittently now whenever i showed up on the scene <clears throat> after you called me up and, and told me whenever i showed up at that point whenever i got here that's when they were telling me they were out of water and the the propane tank still had not gassed off yet okay wow um so you were over here whenever i come walking in you were over here in the trees video videoing over yeah. in the trees i walked up and i spoke with your employee here and then i said is there anything i can do to help i said you know I'll, I'll, I'll hold a hose, I'll do whatever, I'm here to help or whatever, what can I do to help? They said, well, we're out of water, we're out of water. And I said, okay, I understand, but what about, and that's when he spoke up and said, um, what about the pool? And I, and I chimed up, I said, okay, what about the pool? We can tap into the pool, tap into the pool. And then the, the, the fire marshal barked at me and got mad and says, we're not doing that, we're not touching the pool, we're not touching the pool, we, we can't do the pool. I said, why not, there's a pool there. And then the lady fire lady come up and started barking at me and she goes, she goes, we're not doing the pool. That's not how we do things. We're just going to contain it. It's burning too hot. When we spray water at it, the water is evaporating the water. The, the, it's so hot, the water is evaporating. Uh, whatever. And then the fire marshal said, that's an old pine, fat ladder house. It burns so hot, it's, it's just a total loss. We're just going to contain it right now. And I said, okay, fine. Then if you've already determined that it's a containment, um, let it burn on the ground, it's a containment. I said, then you need to start spraying water on the foliage around okay to keep it from burning down the whole neighborhood if that's your if that's your position in the fight i said why aren't we grabbing the water out of the pool and that's when the, the your your ammunition started cooking off a little bit and then that's whenever the um the gas tank started gassing and they wouldn't shoot they there was one there were firemen sitting on the ground over there yep. one fireman had a small tiny hose yep. which that small tiny hose should have been putting on that propane tank sure yeah yeah all right and then that gassed off and that's when the lady threatened me she goes uh the fire lady she goes you need to get back for your own safety i said i don't think you're worried about my own safety but okay and then and then she threatened me and then then that's when she they called the midway cop over and the little chihuahua of the mid midway cop came over and told me i need to get back there and then then they thought i was you they thought i was a homeowner they said we've already told you you got to get back there you need to get back there behind over there up front up there behind the police car but and he chased me all the way he goes behind the police car behind the police car and i said look we're trying to get we're trying to get the pool pumped out we're trying to get attached to the pool we're trying to do something we're trying to be helpful yep. and he goes well and then he goes whatever he left he come back and he, he talked to the fire marshal he goes the fire marshal in charge has said there's no way in hell we're tapping into the damn pool just forget about it and you need to stay out of the way and stay back so, in my opinion, it orders to not put it out. In my opinion, they had already given up before the fight was over. And in my opinion, the, with firemen sitting on their butt, okay, they had, they had already quit in the fight. I mean, at a minimum, they should have been doing a perimeter to make sure the sparks didn't get in the woods and do more damage. At, at a minimum. And that's led me to call 911 when they weren't. And the police found me and told me if I called 911 again, they'd arrest me for taking the initiative to be 400 yards downfield from here where the debris was, was falling on the ground. The debris this big and smoking. And we were tapping it out. So yeah, that was insanely antagonistic. And they had already quit and didn't want us to see it burn is the fact of the matter. And of course now we still see it's, it's smoldering now with no, with no fire watch right now. Smoldering and, and open flame. And open flame and without 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 a fire watch without water hose without anything yeah i think i think this has got to be a teaching moment for liberty county and they've got to do better they can't do much worse is that good